Okay, so I got a ton of snow here. Let's see what happens when we pour liquid nitrogen on it now. This snow is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. But what happens if we make it much colder? Instead of zero degrees, let's make it negative 196 degrees Celsius. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that is cold snow. Let's see what this looks like on the thermal camera. So you can see the spot right where I poured it. We're reading negative 203 Fahrenheit. Oh, that is so cold. So this is so cold. Look at it smoking, but I can hold it in my hand if I just keep moving it. That shows how good of an insulator the snow actually is. So cold. <laughs> so before I poured on the liquid nitrogen, the snow was really good packing snow. But after I poured it on, it became really brittle and crumbly. This is obviously because the regular snow had a little bit of water in it and the surface tension of the water helps hold the ice crystals together. But then after I pour on the liquid nitrogen, the water all freezes and then you just have a bunch of small ice crystals with nothing really holding them together. But what was most amazing about all this is how I could hold the super cold snow in my hand without being hurt. Okay, so here's a regular snowball and liquid nitrogen. Hey, it floats. Okay, so let's get it out now. It should be at liquid nitrogen temperatures. So this one I know was soaked to liquid nitrogen temperatures because it was fully submersed, but I can just full on hold it in my hand. Oh, not for long. It's kind of like dry ice. Okay, let's see what happens when I put it in some water now. Whoa. Now it just froze into an ice ball. Okay, I have two ice cubes, this one. Gonna get to liquid nitrogen temperatures. Okay, now because the rapid boiling has decreased, I know it's reached liquid nitrogen temperatures. So I can actually hold the ice as well. That's interesting. It's a it burns me a little faster than the snow does, but still I can hold it in my hand. So snow has a thermal conductivity of around 0.024 to 0.8 watts per meter Kelvin. Now ice is a little bit higher, but still pretty good. It's around 2.75 watts per meter Kelvin. So snow and ice are extremely good insulators. That's why igloos work. You can actually keep it pretty well insulated and keep the heat in your igloo made out of ice or snow. So my snow here was about 100 degrees colder than the coldest snow on earth. Okay, this is the liquid nitrogen ice. And this is the regular ice. What's interesting is if you put an ice cube cooled down to liquid nitrogen temperatures and a regular ice cube in water, at first you see the super cooled ice cube grow in size because it's freezing the water around it. The liquid nitrogen one is frozen to the side again. So it's been about 20 minutes now and you can see that the liquid nitrogen ice cube is just about twice as big as the regular one. There's not a huge difference here. This is the liquid nitrogen and this is the regular ice cube. The reason this happened is because it actually takes about the same amount of energy to change the temperature of water by 200 degrees Celsius as it does to just change it from a liquid to a solid. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.